So how would you extract insights from data that are absolutely private and confidential? You know, the real data never moves, never leaves the infrastructure because they are subject to uh, regulations that say you cannot move, you cannot share this data. But on the other side, we have machine learning models that can still be implemented and then trained where the data is. They can share these machine learning models by using what we call uh, multi-party computation. I don't go to the details there. It's something that allows you to use the model without looking inside the model. If you launch a missile uh, with AI, of course, the risk that, you know, the impact of a tiny error for that AI algorithm can be huge. But if you uh, predict where users are going to click next in the next five minutes, the being mistaken there has a very low impact, at least on humanity. So it happens that you're working at this platform, at this idea of it chain that basically would help different elements of the ecosystem to monetize their data. Can you talk uh, a little bit about this and how it would work? So the main purpose of FitChain as a platform is to connect data scientists or also what we call data consumers to data owners or data providers. Now, in the world, we found that there is a, uh, an essential need to connect these two actors, especially in those cases in which it is very difficult to perform these connections. So we identified three major domains, uh, which we call the highly regulated environments. Think about banking, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, which in fact are the three domains we are focusing as we speak, in which there is an essential need to unlock data that are private and confidential data and still allow people, data scientists or consumers, to extract insights from this data. And the way we do this via the FitChain platform is to allow data owners to publish a version of the data, a synthetic version of the data that resembles the original one, so that the data scientist or the data consumer on the other side uh, of the planet can in fact consume this synthetic version of the data. They can operate with it, and then they model back to the organization or to the data owner, so that the data owner can train these models on behalf of the uh, model provider uh, in, in private. You know, the real data never moves, never leaves the infrastructure because they are subject to uh, regulations that say you cannot move, you cannot share this data. But on the other side, we have machine learning models that can still be implemented and then trained where the data is. Can we take one example and walk through it and explain how the GDPR blocks that example today and how your platform and concept would enable basically the scientists to provide solutions despite the privacy concerns. So think about a clinic, a research clinic that has is collecting data for skin cancer. All right. So they have a ton of medical images uh, from patients who are affected by skin cancer and uh, they have these, these images in a database that is clearly private, it's clearly confidential, and pathologists cannot really you know, share this information with anyone. Now, this clinic is connected to many other clinics around the world uh, and many other hospitals. And so the idea of this clinic is to build a machine learning model that can predict the risk of cancer, of skin cancer, so malignant cancer, by looking at a picture. Uh, but in fact, from an image and uh, with AI, with um, machine learning models, you can, having a database of observations, uh, you can build a model that assigns a score to that particular image. And so it says there is 70% or 80% that this is a malignant cancer or not. Now, how would you use this information? Because the idea of this clinic is to have this machine learning model that can be shared with all many other clinics around the world as a medical device. But of course, if you want to do so with the current technology, it's very likely that you have to share the data you have so that anyone can build their own machine learning models. With FitChain, you remove this requirement. And so in fact, you keep the data in one location. And in fact, you can allow data scientists or other clinics from around the world 
to build their machine learning models on this data without looking at this data. Now, if you come uh, with a technology that is creating synthetic data, what happens to the overall, if you like, predictability, precision of these algorithms? Algorithms, uh, machine learning in particular, is not traditional software that works in a deterministic fashion, where instead of crude answer, you get probabilities, for example. Uh, we do not train machine learning models on synthetic data. We train machine learning models on the real data. We just provide the synthetic data to the data consumer, to the, to the data scientists, so that they can write, they can implement a machine learning model. But then that model gets shipped where the data is and it gets trained on the real, on the real stuff. Now, with this said, of course, there is still a risk that the data at the source is not is low quality data, for example. And so, of course, there is a risk that the machine learning model learns patterns that are not really true or that it's not always the case that they occur in that specific domain. This can happen and the criticality of uh, machine learning and AI it pretty much depends on how critical the domain where it is deployed is.